Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and today is another MX-5 Mazda Unos Miata day because we've now got the thing on the road and running well. Well, at least we've passed the MOT, so it's road legal, but now I want to make the thing look good as well because although it probably looks quite good on camera, in reality, the paint is astonishingly flat. I'm amazed how flat it actually is when I come to look at it. So I'm gonna give it a quick clean up first of all snow foaming it to get the dirt off there's not a lot of dirt on there then we're going to go through all the diamond bright products and make this thing look as sparkly as possible bear in mind we've got a dented wing still but i want the thing to look nice when i drive it around so i'm going to clay bar it machine polish it and then give it a good old shine up using all the different diamond bright things and there's of course a discount code in the description below use code fd10 at diamondbright.co.uk and all of this stuff can be yours for cheap now starting off with ceramic blast which is a brilliant ceramic foam which not only gives lovely cleaning properties it leaves a tiny trace of ceramic so if you're not about to go and polish the top surface of your car's paint off then uh, you're doing well because it leaves it nice and shiny and repels dirt for next time which is handy and I will just add, if you're doing any underbody cleaning, I did this in the last video, but you've got this wonderful little squirty trolley thing which rolls underneath the taxi jet washer, cleans all of the undercarriage, gets the salt off the floor at this time of year, which is really, really handy. Amazon link in the description below for one of these things, worth every penny. I've cleaned the car with a uh, wash mitt with Max Foam Shampoo as well. We take the opportunity to get the squirty lance thing into all the crevices to make sure there's no dirt hiding places like the back of this number plate. And get all this gunge out the crevices of where the plastic roof zips in to the hood. Well, now the car is clean, we can actually see really how flat the paint is. It looks pretty decent. There's a few little stone chips across the bonnet, but generally okay, apart from obviously where the concrete wall fell on it, but we'll, we'll gloss over that, I mean, perhaps quite literally at a later date. This front wing, you can really see, it's just really kind of misted and clouded. So, well, first of all, we'll hit it with some clay bar because clay bar is amazing stuff. It's literally plasticine that you rub over the paint and it draws the dirt out of it. So it's a lovely smooth surface. Now, first of all, you've got to get this stuff nice and warm. So I'm kneading it around. I might go and make a cup of tea and put it on top of the kettle while it gets warm. One thing to mention, if ever you drop any of this stuff, it instantly goes in the bin because you do not want to be grinding any dirt you've picked up in it back into the paint. And finally, you need to be using some kind of lube on this thing. You can use water at a pinch. I prefer to use some kind of express wash, you know, kind of that tough stuff you see me going around the car shows with and detailing the car when I arrive at the NEC after a four hour drive in the rain. This is really good for that, but it's also really good for lubricating this. And then, quick wipe off. Now, it might not look fantastically different on camera between the panel here, which obviously has got damage to it, and I've just finished clay barring, and this one, which is not clay barred yet, but this, when I run my finger over it, it's like new glass. It's like a brushing a mirror. This one, though, it's like a real drag when you pull your finger down. You can feel the resistance. So there's definitely dirt and stuff in here that is doing bad things. Well, do you know what? That actually looks better already. Uh, it's just taken that kind of surface layer of ingrained dirt out of the paint and that just smooths it over, gives it a bit more of a shine, but you can still see the flatness. And also it's very, very cold and there's a certain amount of moisture in the air. So you can see a bit of misting on the paint as well, which is not improving it. However, I am now gonna crack on with the machine polisher and make this thing look oh so much better. Now I've gone and pulled the DA polisher out of the garage, a selection of pads depending on what we're going to go and use. And we've got a couple of choices here. One cut is my go-to for 
deep cutting paint. One finish is like a soft version you can use if you've got a very mild uh, degradation on the paint. And if it's uh, just a light finishing, just want to get a car that looks good, but just want a better shine to it, diamond cut, use car polish. However, considering how faded this paint is, I think we're gonna go with one cut, but gonna be very careful with it though, because I have been warned the paint on this car will be very thin. Also, is it a good time to mention that last posting date for most things is around the 18th of December. So if you've promised yourself or asked for or want to give a furious driving hat, mug, tin cup, sticker, magnet, whatever else for Christmas for a stocking filler, get your order in fairly soon. Now one accessory I would really like to get hold of is one of those paint depth measuring things. It'd be really handy to have one of those in situations like this. You can see we're taking a bit of green paint off this thing, but it is coming up to a very nice pot shine. And around the back, where we did a bit of extra effort on that high level brake light, that's got a nice gloss too as well. Now since we're around the back, we can have a little polish of the tail lights as well. shine there is some overspray of something on there but a couple more polishes might bring that off kind of midway through now so the driver's side has got a lovely deep British racing green shine to it the back of the car looks pretty good as well passenger side though it still has Hopefully this will show up on the camera as being significantly different. Maybe I can do a side-by-side -side photo. Very, very flat indeed. Really good comparison. Here on the header rail, polish that side, but not that, and it goes from sort of whitey, pale, faded to deep, nice green. Right, let's do it half and half down the bonnet to compare the difference. Well, there we go. That's what half and half looks like down the bonnet. You can really see the extreme gloss and reflection. Let me just go put a hand over there to sort of see some reflection on that side. And then the mirror image on that side. So much better. And of course I pulled the number plate off so we can get underneath there and get that nice and shiny behind where the number plate lives. I had been contemplating getting one of those stick on number plates in the front because they look really smooth and neat, but because I want to get the UNOS badge back on there, I'm not sure there's actually room to do that above the line. Now that is one shiny MX-5 slash Miata slash Unos. I've been around the entire car now with the uh, one cut, taking it all back to a nice base, lovely glossy base. There's a few of these scratches which are really deep, which I've even managed to sort of reduce the appearance of them. And a few little scratches and swirls in the door, which I've managed to lose. Big one just there, I couldn't take it out, it's too deep. And on this top of this uh, rear deck corner here, there was a few scratches which I've managed to get rid of. Again, a couple are a bit too deep to do anything with, but we've taken a lot of imperfections out of the paint. Now the next thing to do is to finish up with well, one finish, which does very much what it says in the can. So it's like a, putting a much finer, finer polish onto it. Four hours later. Well, what do you think of that? That is absolutely spectacular. So very, very shiny indeed. Thank you, Diamond Bright, one cut and one finish. Looks so, so, so good. There is some bad paint crazing down here, which wasn't really too visible before. It does show up it now. But now finally, just to keep it looking super shiny, gonna do a quick ceramic glaze, which is gonna take a, literally a minute or two. Then we've got this thing looking amazing. This stuff is spray on, wipe off, and bang, the car is done. To quote Barry Bethel or whatever his name is. Wipe on, wipe off, and you've got a shiny car that stays shiny. Oh no, come back cloth. That's my wipe off cloth. Well, 
it's done and it is astonishingly shiny. It's like a new car almost. You do use quite a lot of uh, microfiber towels though when you get involved in this kind of thing because you don't use them for too long. Once they get a bit damp, get a clean one. Ah, so pop the lights up, get that little clean up inside. So that looks good. Now to sort out the black rubber bits around the windows and the hood. The hood's gonna be interesting. Right, so this is replenish. It is vinyl and rubber cleaner and conditioner, so it takes dirt out of vinyl. I'll be honest, I thought this was a cloth um, roof for some reason. And I actually asked Diamond Bright how you clean a cloth roof, and they said use interior cleaner, the foaming stuff that we use on the, uh, on the seats sometimes. But this is vinyl, so we're gonna just rub this over here, and it will take dirt out of this vinyl top and it'll leave it protected and shiny and looking frankly amazing. And normally I rewash and reuse my microfibers loads of times for all kinds of different things. However, this stuff, I just keep them only for this because once it's in that cloth, it does not come out. Now we've got this little scuttle area here, which is quite green and monkey from where it's been sat outside under trees and things over time. And this replenish will do the same thing again to that. It will clean it right out and get it looking really very nice indeed. Now that is monumentally satisfying to look at. I mean, the gloss on this thing is just out of this world. I've done the windows with ultra glaze, which has made it really shiny. The roof has been obviously replenished, which makes it look superb. It's just so, so good. I, mean, I know this was nowhere near as bad as the Moldeo to start with, which was just an epic adventure in cleaning, but this was very flat paint before, and this is now, it's like glass. It's so, so pretty. Now there's a few little things around the car I would like to do just to tidy up, as well as the wheels obviously and the suspension, but there's a few other bits and bobs, just little tiny things I would like to do around the car just to make it look a little bit prettier. Now I was kind of hoping that by the time I got this video filmed I would have managed to locate a replacement wing and the wheels I was after, but I've been messaging a few people on Facebook Marketplace and eBay and things uh, with cars being broken and so forth, but nothing has come up yet unfortunately, so we'll have to save that for the next episode or well, episode shortly after. Apart from the R50 Mini, which I'm obviously not modifying because it's such a rare original, and the Classic Mini, which I'm too early into the project to do anything to, I've never had a car with quite so many options for changing things, so I do need to change out this cracked indicator module, but I think I might well go for an original one because they look kind of cool this way. Look, I like the original look, but they're like 75 quid for a little indicator, so I'm looking for a good second hand one. Um, headlamps, there's options to do that as well, but it's just almost too many choices. But I do want to upgrade the lighting quite considerably, LEDs around, because something I have noticed driving this around, because it's such a tiny car, people just don't really see it. And I'm, I've hooted at a few people just cutting in front of me who haven't even noticed me. So I want to upgrade the headlamp bulbs, I want to upgrade everything to LED lamps. Um, there's some nice crystal clear lights I think we might stick in there. Just choosing the right ones is a real, real mission actually, trying to find the right one. Um, MX5 parts, I think it is. I've got some really nice clear lens poly car at lamps, I just think I'll stick in there with some LED bulbs just to get a bit more sparkle and a bit more brightness. I know it might dazzle and upset people, but I don't want the car to get driven into. Around the back, we will load these lamps with LEDs. I did call into Halfords earlier, but they're 25 quid a bulb or two for a pair of bulbs, so it was going to be like 75 pounds for the rear end to be changed, which is it's a lot. I'm sure I can get that cheaper online. And uh, finally, the little side repeaters. These are actually a little bit cloudy and a little bit crazed inside the plastic and so I did actually buy some from Amazon and, and I started filming and installing them and they are, I was trying not to go for the sort of slightly chavvy too much smoked or too much clear but I think it's like a nice compromise clear ones with orange LEDs built into it. Unfortunately the, the spade terminal on the end was completely wrong so having got it out of the car it was it was not the right one possibly for a later version of the car I don't know. Of course one really cool feature I do get which I don't have to add to it is it's got the JDM square number plate plinth. A lot of uh, British MX-5s I see do have the, the square number plate added to them but this has had it well from new. Awesome huh? So I've actually now got two cars with square Japanese slash American style number plates because this and the Crown Vic have both got square plates. 
which is nice. Anyway, that is now looking spectacular. Now, one thing I thought I would just give a, you know, I've got nothing to lose, can I try, is diamond cut, which is a very mild abrasive on the rear window because it's kind of a, you got nothing to lose kind of situation. It's already very cloudy indeed. You can't really make it any worse because it's already pretty knackered. So I took this much dirt out of this here over. So looking at the window, you're looking kind of from the end of Land Rover and to the right, I have cleaned. And there's a dark patch, which I managed to take out. I haven't removed the clearance. I did talk to uh, the boffins at Diamond Bright, and they do employ boffins, I have to say. This stuff doesn't just magic itself. And they basically said that, yeah, you're going to struggle to clean plastic that's gone cloudy like this because it's kind of embedded and it's changed the colour of the plastic itself. But, this is not what they've said though, if you can get dirt out of the surface it will look clearer. And so my idea is just to very lightly take a bit of surface dirt out of it to get a little bit of a clearer view. It's easier to see from the outside because I've cleaned up to about this point now and that is, yeah, misty but clear. Whereas this side, it's got like a blackish kind of mottled mark on it. So it's a little bit clearer looking through there. Now this is possibly one of the most satisfying things you can do with a car, just to kind of take it from looking a little bit tired, a little bit down at heel, and then just spending an afternoon or a day just absolutely transforming it. And this car does look just so much better. It didn't look bad, bad before, but it looks like, well, better than brand new now. Inside the car, I've given the leather a quick rub over with uh, the leather feed cleaner, which is the thing you should do every sort of so often with leather seats anyway, just keep them supple, stop some crappy, cracking, <laughs> not doing bad things. Uh, there's a bit of scuffing on the colours, so I'm going to get some leather coloration stuff and having fed them a few times, that will make it a bit easier to, uh, to feed in the future. And of course I've given everything else a little buzz over with the interior trim enhancer, which gives a nice little sheen, like a satiny sheen to the, uh, the plastics and uh, everything else in the vinyls without leaving it sticky or shiny. So that looks really fantastic. And of course we've also got those magnificent V special floor mats, which I cannot get over how cool they are. I love the fact we've got the original Nardi steering wheel, the original wooden handbrake lever. And of course we have got the metal gear shifter, which a few people have pointed out should be wood as well. I'm on the lookout for that. There's a few, there are a few other bits and bobs which I am on the lookout for, just to go back to it original with, but there's lots of other great things. I mean, there's just a blanking plate just here, so we could go doubled in on this head unit, because this is an aftermarket one anyway, so we could go doubled in just there. That would be really cool to do that. Maybe sort of bung in sat nav and that kind of thing. That'd be really handy. Um, there was a thing I saw on MX-5 parts, which was a phone holder to just pop into here in the ashtray. I thought that's a great idea. Then I actually did balance my phone in here just to try it and realised I couldn't actually change gear. So that's maybe an idea I won't go ahead with, but never mind. But there's a ton of other things. There's so many little, little things, personalisation tricks to make an MX-5 your own. And you know what, the ownership experience of this thing, one of the most enjoyable of any car I've owned. Just the reaction this thing gets is just astonishing. Everywhere you go, people just look at it and smile. It's in incredible. It's a bit like driving an original Mini or an Austin 7. You get that amazing kind of, oh, that looks fun, kind of vibe. So yeah, I've been picking my son up from school in it this week and he's been loving that because he just likes to be out and seen in it. The other kids at school will go, oh look at that, they've never seen the pop-up headlights. It's remarkable. We go, oh that's so cool and retro. Younger generations are going, wow that's amazing, why can't we have that? So there you go. Anyway, so I hope you've enjoyed this little episode of cleaning, buffing, polishing, making wonderful this gorgeous little Mazda Unos Roadster. If you enjoyed this, please, as always, hit like and subscribe. If you want to get some Furious Driving merch for Christmas, head over to furiousdriving.co.uk. And if you want to make your car look as good as this, then head over to johnmanbrock.co.uk. And don't forget to use the discount code in the link below. I think it's FD10. Anyway, right. Thank you for watching and join me again next time. We've got a few other cars that need some attention as well now. Mm -hmm.